Hey there guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be providing you with some data that I recently gathered during a live stream where I asked you, the audience, what exactly you would like to see me image on that one-off session uh, when I was live streaming it, and you chose the Propeller Nebula. So let's just jump straight into it and um, we can process alongside one another. So uh, in the description box, just down below this video, you're going to see a link to my Google Drive where I'm hosting a file for you. And it's going to be this, it's probably called something like Luke Matico Propeller Data. And it's going to have two different files within it. So we're going to have one right here, which is a, uh, a FITS or a TIFF file. I can't remember exactly which. That's going to be your data itself. And if you're using PixInsight like me and would like to use the exact same tool set that I'm using, I've included those for you too. So you just drag those and drop them in. If they don't appear for you, by the way, this is a really common issue once you've dragged them in. Just right click and click arrange icons and they should all come into your currently used workspace. Now, uh, don't really view this one as a tutorial as such because it's really just going to be me having a quick go at processing this data. Uh, but all the same, I thought I'm going to talk you through things. So why not record it anyway? And uh, we'll see exactly what we get. So the first thing I've just clicked on right there, STF tool, the screen transfer function. Going to take a quick look at this data so i've left it with a linked stretch you could take a look on linked if you like to where i'm going with this there's a few little issues that we need to address so i can see some uh, stacking artifacts bottom left like say just right there just really obvious to see so i'm going to crop these straight out i'm going to use the dynamic crop tool you can just take the corners pull them in slightly and crop those right out now the next thing I'm going to want to do is get rid of the light pollution gradient that's present within this image. To do that, I'm going to use dynamic background extraction. I'm just going to use the target image correction of subtraction because it is a additive gradient from light pollution. Uh, you'd usually use division if you're dealing with some kind of vignette issue. Um, so I'm going to discard the background model. Don't really need to see it for this, I would imagine. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just start selecting some areas of the background that I think should probably rec um, represent the background color of space. Um, in this case, it's looking kind of green, right? So that's not really very spacey at all. Um, but all the same, let's just get these spots selected. You can see kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm not dropping it on bright stars. I'm not dropping it on nebula. It's more just on dark regions such as these. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, that looks reasonable if not exactly populated very much with sample points but we'll I'll just have a little quick go at it so let's execute that and apply the STF looks pretty good to me I'd say it's got rid of most of the gradient if we just close DB now you can see the difference right there between the two pretty massive so I'm just gonna minimize that and get that out of the way for a moment and we're gonna go ahead and continue working on this now because I captured this data during that live stream with a rasa is mirrored uh, so this is actually the wrong way up so I'm gonna to go to processes and geometry and we use fast rotation and apply a vertical mirror and that puts this thing back in the correct orientation that it should be uh, and this is an optional step for you if you just want to save time and practice your processing or in my case because I'm just making this as a, a little video I'm probably gonna have a proper attempt at processing this some other time I am going to resample this right now you don't have to do this uh, but if you do let's say do a for example a 50% resample I go ahead and drag and drop that across that's going to make the image you know one quarter the size that it originally was you'd have to kind of tile these across in a two by two grid to get back to that original size now uh, this is going to save you a lot of time with certain processing tools, which we're gonna jump into in just a moment. But again, purely optional. Uh, you don't exactly have to do that. Now then, next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is, well, it's in a really untouched state. We've just kind of DBE'd it, cropped it. Uh, the first thing I wanna actually apply is Blur Exterminator. Now, this is a perfect opportunity, by the way, to say that I do have affiliate links down below for Blur Exterminator and Noise Exterminator, Static Exterminator, in fact, all of the Russell Crowman tools. He was very kind uh, to give me a uh, membership to his affiliate scheme. And uh, listen, you guys using those links makes a huge difference to my life. So thank you very genuinely from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to everybody who's already used them and to everybody who's considering using them. Uh, I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of it. Now, 
I'm just going to use this at its absolute defaults because honestly, it tends to work awesome just with its defaults. So I'll let this process and get straight back to you. All right, so that's just finished running now and I'm going to take a quick look and show you the difference, the before and the after, if you will. So if I just undo and redo, you can see those stars have gotten far tighter. And so have some of the slight nebulous details that are present in this image. It's not really an image that's too rich uh, in details due to the nature of the target that we shot. It's very diffuse. Uh, in fact, there's the main actual target itself, the propeller in this thing. And you can see it almost looks like it's been uh, painted by <laughs> in space. So, um, yeah, it's not exactly a too detailed rich target like a galaxy, but all the same. Blur Exterminator. You know, it works. It's an absolutely awesome tool. I use it on every image. Uh, can't say anything bad about it. Now, Noise Exterminator is what's up next, because as you can see, if I just zoom this in, and hopefully you can see <laughs> through YouTube's compression, we are dealing with a bit of noise, nothing too drastic. Uh, if I'm being honest, this was only a uh, one hour and 55 minute data set. So uh, that RAS is working well for me. And there it is, it's just finished applying that after a, a brief pause right there. You can see if I just go undo it and redo, the noise reduction is unfathomably good. Um, yeah, absolutely awesome. Again, once, once I got these tools, there was just no going back for me. Um, and next up, I would say, I think I'm probably going to want to take this into the non-linear phase of processing. So I'm going to use one of my friend Bill's tools here, HT Stretch unlinked in this case so i'm just going to drag and drop that across again at this point reset my stf and it looks like there's a small amount of maybe like a green background cast i'll just throw an scnr on top to get rid of that too uh, i realize this is extremely <laughs> slipshod processing but again it's just a quick demonstration of this data for you and the stars are now looking pretty good in terms of color at least for dual narrowband filter data uh, so now I'm going to use Star Exterminator and take those out. I want to preserve them as they are at this exact point in processing. So I'll drag that across. Make sure to tick on-screen stars for this one. All right, guys, that's just finished uh, as Star Exterminator right there. And let's just take a look. Looks like it's done a fantastic job, as always. I'll just go ahead and close down Star Exterminator now. Now, the reason I mentioned to make sure you tick on screen stars is because it does a much better job of putting the stars back in during the next steps. Uh, and I provided some tools for rescreening your stars back into the image right there that I made just a little while ago. Super simple drag and drops, and I'll demonstrate their usage for you in just a minute or two. So uh, I'll minimize the stars for now to uh, reduce the visual clutter. And let's get back on with processing. So we're left now with this nice starless image, and it's looking, honestly, pretty good I would say uh, at this point I'm going to open up the curves transformation create a preview on that window and I'm just gonna give it just a very gentle I reckon a small s curve to increase the overall contrast visible in the image you can see that's working pretty well maybe I'll go ahead if it's a slightly more aggressive on that nothing too drastic though I don't want to be clipping any data at all, especially this early into processing, uh, if I can. Next up, uh, I want to apply just a very small amount of saturation as well, I'd say, just so I can see exactly what I'm working with now. Not tons, you know, and also not desaturating it, but just a little. Right, that's the uh, that's the baseline where it's at. I'm just going to take it up to about there. Hopefully, you can see the uh, the before and after right there, so I can really see clearly now exactly what we're working with. Now, uh, I'm going to employ a technique right now that I've kind of been using for a little while uh, that I'm just going to call sacrificial cloning. So I'm going to take two different clones from the original data and I'm going to effectively destroy them with this next stretch, but just with the purposes of taking a mask from them, really, using Bill's masking tools. So. Uh, I've got a preview set up on just one of those clones right now. I'm just, with just the red channel selected on Curves Transformation, I'm going to boost those reds uh, quite aggressively. So going up quite a lot. And then I'm going to cut down on the background values just by adding a second histogram pip very near the, the black levels uh, just over here. So that looks 
pretty well it looks horrendous but i mean it looks pretty good at isolating the the reds out and that's what we actually want so don't be too worried about it looking pretty at this point so that's good i'm going to make a red mask from that as you can see now we've got a very effective mask with all the red in the image i'm going to use bill's mask blurring tool and i'm going to increase the sigma slightly maybe triple the original value take it up to 21 looks pretty good to me uh it's like we fell on a, a decent value just by accident not bad so i can go ahead and close that first sacrificial clone now the next clone that i made i'm going to use this again with a preview but this time i'm going to work on the kind of blues the teals in this image be a, a dual narrowband image so i'm going to bring up those blues a little bit and drag just down slightly the background values so i'm starting to kind of isolate the bits that i really want to see in this image once again working on it just a little bit further so we don't have to get this all done just in one as i'm going to demonstrate right now i'm going to give it a few more iterations a couple more that's looking reasonable i would say maybe it's just a touch more blue so we can really isolate that out with a mask and a, even a touch of saturation too on this particular sacrificial uh, little clone that we've made here now i know there's a little bit of an inverse vignette or something left in the top right corner but it is what it is it doesn't really matter does it for the sake of this so uh, if you wanted to clear that up you could probably using dbe and a, a division to get rid of that um but i'm just going to go with it as it is uh that looks like it's got most of the blue it's not too bad i'm going to instead now clip most of this mask off so i've got blue mask selected using the histogram transformation tool which i just opened right over there make a preview window and just by dragging that black point across i'm going to clip out a lot of the unwanted pixel values so you can see i've got tons of stuff over by the middle that i'm really not bothered about having in the mask in fact i think it'd be uh, deleterious to the mask itself so i'm going to clip a fair bit and just keep that bit right there that'll do not a pretty mask i realize but again it doesn't really have to be i'm going to apply a bit of mask blur right there and go ahead and get rid of that other sacrificial clone so now we've got our base image and two masks to work on it with so i'm going to use the blue mask first in this case that's applied and with the uh, propeller nebula again selected i'm going to open curves once again and start working on that blue channel now i'm going to pump it up just a little i'm not going to go as far in this actual uh, version of the image now as i did for those um, sacrificial masks where all i was interested in doing was pulling out the exact data that i wanted to work on effectively but here's the before here's the after you can see we've raised those values supply a little bit of saturation so we can see exactly what's going on in those regions i'm going to go ahead with that i'll just remove that mask for a moment so we can take a look at the image uh, again you could probably get rid of that gradient in the top right with a uh, division if you wished but i'm just going to continue on regardless and now use the the red mask once again, open a preview on that main window, and this time with the red channel in the curves transformation window selected, I'm going to bring those reds up a little bit. So again, nothing too drastic. You don't want to start making it look cartoonish. And if you go the opposite way, you're going to see uh, the effects that you're having on the image right there. But I'm going to bring it up a touch. Nothing's getting burned out. You know, it's, it's still looking reasonable. Um, I'm also going to apply a slight amount of boost to the green you can see the effect that that's having on the lighter areas especially it's turning them towards more of a uh, an orange or even if you go further towards a yellow kind of thing so just a little bit and then take away a touch of the lower end to bring uh, the rest of the fainter reds if you will back to more of a, a fire orange which i quite like to see uh, in images i really you know i like that color uh and uh who are we processing, processing for, if not for ourselves? Um, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to say I'm fairly satisfied at that. I'll just have to uh, remake the preview window there. It seems to have uh, crashed a preview. But there you have it, the before and the after. Nice changes, I would say. And I 
think at this we can remove both of the other masks now and just work with an overall RGBK adjustment. Uh, I'm going to go up on the mids ever so slightly and again just bend it into a, a very gentle S curve. I realize it's extremely gentle but all the same it's uh, giving me the desired effect. I'll go ahead with that and reset all my tools, close down these masks now. Done with those. Get rid of the uh, the visual cutter. And at this point, if you want now, you could perhaps denoise the image again a little bit. You can see some more noise has crept in, so I'll just pass noise exterminator over it. Probably 64 or so value. And there you have it. You can see uh, noise exterminator once again. It just takes the cake, you know, it works really, really, really well. It's a wonderful tool to use. Now I'm going to open back up those stars that we talked about earlier. So I've got both of these images open, my stylus and my stars image. And I'm going to use the little tools that I made. So the stylus for each screening goes on the stylus image, you guessed it. Stars for each screening goes onto the stars image. And then the third one, rescreen stylus stars onto any of them. And then we have it, we've got the stars back in the image and a, well, a completed image if you like. It's mostly completed, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, no doubt there's more data that could be pulled out of this thing, but this was just a brief demonstration really uh, to show you exactly how I'm going to go about processing it. I'll have another proper go at this some other time, but um, that's about it from me guys. So again, as always, thank you all for tuning into the live stream and spending your time with me. I uh, massively appreciate it. It's great to be able to chat with you live and just bounce off one another. You know what I mean? It makes the night go faster uh, and I enjoy it. I enjoy your company. So uh, thanks very much for that. Thank you to everybody for joining uh, the channel membership programs, giving likes, comments, subscriptions, or just watching the videos. You know what I mean? It all helps me out a ton. And again, if you are going to use those blur exterminator, noise exterminator, star exterminator tools, and you don't, you know, don't already have them, please do consider using my affiliate links as uh, it just massively helps me out uh, a ton. <laughs> I'm going to say that. So uh, thanks to everybody who's already used them as well. And that's about it from me. I'll see you all in the next one, guys. So until then, look after yourselves and close, guys.